This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. It's Alex. Yeah. Voice only until about a half hour from right now or 25 minutes from right now. Uh, we're uh, with a ramble, and we go until midnight Eastern Daylight Time. Why do we do it? Well, because it's uh, insanity, because it's doing the same thing over and over again with the same result, okay? Meanwhile, uh, you know, it's time for us to uh, uh, hit the road and talk to this old friend. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from San Frangima, California. Well, you're not living in San Francisco, are you, Stephen Pearl? No, I'm not making $90,000 a minute, so I can't afford San Francisco. I've been neighboring, where am I? I'm in, uh, oh God, I blanked out. I forgot the name of the town I live in. All. I'm in lovely Concord, Concord by the sea, yeah, where it, people go to die. And in fact, uh, uh, you used to live in San Francisco, right? I used to live in San Francisco from everywhere from the Tenderloin to Middle Knob Hill to... Clipper Street. That was my favorite place on Clipper Street because it was between neighborhoods and there was a view. So, and, and so why 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 did you move out of San Francisco? Because I believed fame and fortune awaited me in Hollywood. Hollywood. So, like an idiot, I went to Hollywood. It was fun for about four years, and then it was a living hell. Now I'm back. Now your prices have gone up since then. No oh boy. So you can't. You, know, you lied to me, Sam Kennison. You lied. You dead fat man. I'll get you in the next world. So, so, so you went to L.A. You gave up an went to L.A. You gave up an apartment that was costing you how much? Uh, the last one it was on the hill with a view on Clipper Street. That was like four twenty-five a month. Uh, it was a big studio too, so oh, you go bowling in it. <laughs> yeah, you see me really like it. That's okay. I'm going to go to L.A. and make millions. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. So you go to L.A. Well, my dream. I go to L.A., it was fun for six years, my dreams were sharpened at the edges and shoved up my ass sideways, so now I'm back and it's hard to sit down. Well, you were part of kind of Kinnison's crew, weren't you? Mm-hmm. Well, I was the uh, I was the Norman Fell of that rat pack. I was there, but I was way on the end of it where I wanted to be, because uh, I, I danced on the edge of the circle of fire, but I never jumped in it, because if you did, you'd get the drink thrown in your face and smacked in the so face. So those people who were in the center, the body, center but, of... of, of Kinnison's orbit were all having going to have problems emotionally, right? Yeah, yeah. So they, yeah, not too many of them got out of it clean. <laughs> Only Mitchell Walters because he's just crazy to begin with. But, but uh, so you, yeah, did, you, uh, you decided not to get in the middle of all of that because you were self-preservationist of you. you were, yeah, I was most. Yeah, you know, like Mitzi, Mitzi wanted me to move into the comics house, Crest Hill. He had to live with the other comics. I wouldn't do that. No, and I'll see these people at night and maybe during the day if I stay up real late. But no, I got to have my own my own space when, during the daytime when I'm not here. So I'm, I'm going to, this will be my nighttime stuff. But but you, not my daytime you traveled stuff, with so. Sam and you were part of that comedy show occasionally, right? Well, I never traveled. I never went on the road with them. I worked with them up here and down there when I was in uh, in L.A. Yeah. We worked at a comedy store together. But, uh, uh, okay. You know, yeah, so I go on so the, 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 the story yeah. isn't Sam, but then oh, that doesn't pay off, and you decide, I better move back to San Francisco because living in L.A. Oh, is... No, what happened was, I God, I was in L.A. for years and years and years after Sam got killed. And it was the thing, it was starting to sour around that time. I moved there in the end of 86. And I came, I think I actually moved down at 287 was like empty my apartment up here. And then I was down there. It was fun for about five or six years. Sam got killed and the stuff started souring. You know, well, I'm getting older now. I'm 40 in LA. You know. And uh, it just got shitty. And then luckily I reconnected with Nita up here, my old girlfriend from the 80s. And uh, it was a way out and a way to be with somebody I really loved. So it boom, by LA. <laughs> so you come back. Did you, did you try to look for an apartment? Yeah, I did. I, I and like okay, okay, so, okay. So uh, this is that's what I want to know. You were paying four fifty. Now you're yeah, looking at places. Eighty seven. That was when I left. Yeah, and you came back in. It came back in hello uh, oh nine and uh, uh, oh nine eighty. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you left San Francisco in eighty seven? No. When did you leave? Yes, I left. I found, yes, I totally moved to L A. in eighty seven. 
I think it was June 24th, let's say. And then I you came back, you came back. And then I but jumped you, in my car, and I had my van, and threw everything packed in a little... Okay, but thing. you came back. When did I you come back? I came back. When, my tail between my legs, ashamed of myself. When did you, oh, come, when, when did you come back? I came back in... Um, 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 hello. Uh, I'm just going to right now. I can't remember anything. Uh, I came back in oh, maybe oh three. Uh, I think if it was six years in L.A. I don't. I can't count all of a sudden. I'm going blank here. Uh, what have you done to me, marijuana? What have you done? Well, I, I, I came back here in oh in oh oh no. I'm sorry. I came back here in March, April of oh nine. April of oh nine. Wait a minute. Well, you came, came here in April. Here. Wait a minute. But you said you were there for six years. And if you were there for six years, what you no, just no, 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 no. I said the first six years was fun. Oh, uh, I see. I was comedy store every night. It was fun. I hang out with Kenneth and blah, blah, blah. Then he gets killed. And then the comedy store starts to sour, and it's not fun going there anymore. And I know my friends are going anymore. And I was just stuck there for another what? How many fucking years was I there? I was there from 87 to 09. And so, oh, okay. Uh, okay. So, so you were there. Years. You were there almost 20, 30 years. You were there 13 years. In LA. No, I was there for 87, 97, 07, it's after 22 years. Hey, I can take a full count. Wait a minute, 20, 22, 22 fucking years. I didn't. Oh, wow. You know something? Because I left doing the radio show in 1997. Uh, I don't remember you having left San Francisco by that point. Or had you I left? I came up, I did this show occasionally when I come up, Bob Moore was looking for a gig or somebody up here. And I would do your show, so I was doing your show for about 93 or something, maybe, uh, 94. There's a picture of me doing your show with Paulie Shore, of all people, yeah. uh, taken in 93, uh, so, and that's before I get to the or something. Yeah, but, so, uh, so basically... No, I, kept coming, I kept coming up here, but uh, I was in L.A. from 87 oh, Okay, on. so 22 years later, you come back. How much is the $450 rent, do you figure? Oh, back then it was about yeah, 20, 2500 How do you want to think what it goes for now? Because there was an apartment for rent in that very building, that last one I lived in. And I called up just to find out about, hey, maybe I could move back again. And, oh, well, this one's more than you can afford to buy more. 20, said, okay, so, uh, did you say 2500 yeah, yeah, yeah. For that was Jeez, oh my! <laughs> now I was in an apartment. I was in an apartment in San Francisco, in which I was. I had two. You may remember I had two apartments. Uh, I remember the Marino one. They were on. The, yeah, well, they were on the same floor, and they were across. Wow, the, uh, they across the the uh, uh, a fire escape. Basically, you could uh -huh. walk across from one to the other. You go out of the kitchen in one. You come in the kitchen in the other. And the reason I, I did that it. is at one point I said to myself, you know. Uh, I'm uh, I'm gathering too much stuff, and I'm working. Yeah. I'm 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 working where I where I play. Oh wait a minute, my girlfriend's sending me a message. What, what did she say? What, what, what was that all about? Anyway, so where was I? Take the eggs out of the microwave. Yeah, take the eggs out of the microwave is right. So any, anyway, so I um um, what was what, what was I trying to say? Oh, so, so I, uh, I, I, I had one apartment, and it was $1,600 a month for a one-bedroom. And the other one came in at something like, uh, well, I don't know, 2000 or something. So I was, I was paying about, uh, between the two, I was paying $2,300 a month for two apartments. Wow. Wow, you were making some dough then, too. Yeah. So I know that. So yeah, yeah. Show, yeah. So. but uh, today... I would imagine one of those apartments Ooh. is going for at least four thousand dollars. Oh my god! I would yeah. imagine. Yeah. Oh yeah. If you want something, they're sending they're, they're renting like bathrooms in the tenderloin for like three thousand a month. It's insane. Yeah. It's all the techies and uh, the uh, computer young people who've taken over and moved in, and they're making all this money and spending, and they raise the rent sky high, and they're spending it mostly on rent, and they got enough for a couple of hot dogs. But uh, yeah. that's what's gone on. A lot of the artists have been driven out of San Francisco. A lot of oh, oh people, I, but, you know, uh, San Francisco was an artist town. You know, when I was, was when I was growing up there with my parents, my parents were what they called bohemians, oh, and they know, loved well, that city because they, they knew all these people who were like just the hip people. And they were artists, and they were poets, and yep. everything. San Francisco was a great, had a great artistic community that later on became a great comedy community as well. Good. I can't imagine there's that there's any kind of that there's any art being produced. 
in no, San Francisco. No, there's a very weak comedy scene, and uh, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's just uh, young people going to work and uh, to do their little computer jobs or whatever. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's not what it, it's definitely what it, it's still a beautiful city. I love it, but who can afford to live there? Yeah, so people but, say, come back to San Francisco. God. Come back to San Francisco. And you, I go, everything I've heard is that I'm going to be vastly disappointed, you know? That it's not. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's not going to be running with the crew. The crew you used to. That's for sure. So yeah. Well, that crew can't, it can't afford to live in San Francisco anymore. <laughs> oh no, that crew either moved scattered. to LA they're, or died or whatever. And then there's me. So. Well, I mean, most of you. Here's what happened with most comics in those days, and I have to say, comics. And we don't have to have a comedy discussion here, because we do that way too often. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, the reason I'm mentioning comedians is because these are the people I knew. These were my friends. Yep. And sure. I think most of them had moved to L.A. because you had to move to L.A. San Francisco was where you honed your act, you got your reputation, and then you moved to L.A. Because that's you where the to, yeah. real work was. Yep. Did you ever try for, out for a sitcom or anything like that? I did some readings. <laughs> I never give, gave you really two craps about acting so much even though I knew that was the golden key. But uh, I wrote some stuff that didn't go anywhere, and uh, I I, uh, I, want, I wanted to do stand-up comedy, you know. Well, Sam Kittes is making this a stand-up. Why can't I? But you, you know? see, there's no... There's and, no, there's uh, no... I, I was mostly interested... I went on reading and stuff, but I was mostly interested in just performing stand-up and kicking ass, which I did. Yeah, but as a profession, you know, the, the idea back then was, I will get known as a comic, right? This is what most comics did. I will be known as a comic... And I will get a reputation as a comic, and then I will um, get myself a sitcom. Yeah. Go down to LA and be, get, get a sitcom. sitcom or movie video yeah, and then blah, blah, blah. Never, never have, have never never have to do that fucking stand up again. In fact, you probably knew guys that bought acts just so they could be seen. <laughs> sure, especially in LA. Sure. Literally, sure. you could, you yeah, could buy an act. Good. You go to uh, there are a lot of great comedy writers. You go to a comedy writer, he writes you an act. Yeah, and you go, Hi, folks. I'm not really a comic. I'm, I'm more of an actor, but I have a little stand-up presentation I'd like to do. So hopefully, I'll get on the sitcom. Hey, it's him. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. I mean, you remember those you, guys. <laughs> you remember Roseanne? I mean, she was a great stand-up, just a, sure. a superb up, stand-up. But once she got that t- sitcom, I don't think she ever did stand-up again. But she might. She did a couple of times. She had a couple of HBO things uh, later on. But no, she's uh she was just mostly doing this, the uh, sitcom yeah. and rolling around and all her money. So, so L.A. did not prove to be any kind of a life's work, right? No, no. It was fun. As I said, the first six years was a lot of fun hanging out with Sam, and the comedy store was a pretty prestigious place back then. And well, uh, I mean, did you get uh, did you, I, did you get going it? on there every night? Was amazing. You, it was did, fun. It was great. Did you audition for parts? Sure. In fact, people saw me. I got the. An audition for a Spielberg film from someone who saw me in the Mater with the comedy store. They like my voice. I don't even know they listen to my stand up. Hey, we'd like you to audition for a Spielberg movie. We do a voiceover. What, sure. What's Spielberg? And I had like I had four callbacks, man, and then Brad Garrett got it. Boom, oh, curse was spoiled again. What, wait a minute, what was the movie? It was the Casper the Friendly Ghost movie. I was going to oh, be the, one of the voice oh, of the Ghost I Trio. Had, my, and I read, I read, hey, Casper, what are you doing now? Like a real, you know, cartoon voice. And they liked it, and I got like four callbacks. And then uh, after my friends go, it's in the bag, baby. You're gonna be in. You know, you're gonna be on all the cards. And, and then, and, then uh, they go uh, hire a known person. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. Brad's great, but you know, yeah. come on, man, give it to me. So. A funny story about Casper the Friendly Ghost. That was one of the early pictures where they combined animation with live action, yep. in, in, in with computers. Uh, they'd done that before without computers, but with computers. And yeah. uh, my ex-girlfriend, Kathleen, her uh, brother was working for uh, was it, it for Industrial Light and Magic at the time, doing animation. And they were doing the animation on Casper. And he told yeah. me that at least a dozen people, after that movie was through, just left and never did animation again. Because it was, because it was so... So absolutely un- just daunting doing that <laughs> that after it was over they were just I don't want to see another I, I don't want to see another uh, CGI machine again you know 
Uh, and, and they just got yeah. out. They quit ILM just because they were exhausted. <laughs> really, there were more suicides after that movie than it, any other film. Exactly, and they, all became, with the they all became ghosts, and they made another movie out of it. So anyway. There you go, yep. Uh, but, Casper too. You haven't seen shit yet. So what were the message I guess we have here is that San Francisco uh, is a little too um, not fun anymore. Uh, did I just put that right? The only guy I know. Yeah, still- it's, 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 well, it was, you know, of course, it, you can say about any era of anyone who gets older. And at a particular time, we're older now, and there was just this comedy scene that happened. There was so many of us, and yeah. it was amazing. It was just amazing, and that's that's bad. It came, you know, came and it went like the '60s came and went. You know, but, you know, you know what it is. Also, as you get older, you're less flexible. In other words, I, you know, I'm I I, I live in an apartment here, big one, and I want to live here. For the rest of my life, however long that's yeah, you going to be, okay? I don't want to go anywhere. Yep. Um, when you're younger, you'll sleep on floors, you know? You'll, oh, sure. You know, it doesn't matter where We're your tight. digs are for the moment. You'll do it, you know? Mm-hmm. And and what happened with us um, is as you get older, you're less flexible that way. Yeah, I, did, I, want, I, need a pl- I need my bed. You know, I need my place. I need my yeah, creature and comforts. I, my God, I've been around the world a million times. I've played Japan like six times. I've been all over the place. And I just, I'm, I haven't even renewed my passport, man. The first time in like so many, 30 years, but uh, I did not have a passport now. I just want to stay home. I, I, I like it here. The Bay Area has always been my happy place for some reason. And I just, you know, I'll, I'll perform when I can, but this is where I want to be. And I really... Don't feel like traveling, going anywhere. I've been there. Yeah, but it's just <laughs> well, it's I mean, it's just sad that the soul has been sucked out of that city because that city. Yeah, was, well, it, it it had to happen sooner or later. It is sad. It's very it's well. No, you you almost listen. You better. almost thought you know for for how many years the show business has been around since silent days and whatever. San Francisco has sure. been a very special town, and San Francisco had an attitude of what it was. And what it uh, wasn't, and what it wasn't, okay, and yep. uh, that was a wonderful thing about it. It was kind of the fuck yep. you city of the United States. You know, yeah, exactly, exactly. We'll I, do it our way. If I, they don't like it, go somewhere else. I mean, where else could a gay movement begin and flourish better than San <laughs> yep. Francisco? Okay, yep. because of the acceptance of anybody, the acceptance of what you do. Hey, you're a comedian. Hey, that must be interesting. Other places, it's don't yep. date my daughter. You know. Yeah, exactly. How much money So, so I mean, it it really as a as a city that was different than any other city was just incredible. But it sounds like it's, you know, if I leave there, I go to San Francisco, and it's uh, New York with fog. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, well, I just, I'm still, I still love the scenery. I drive over the bridge. I love it, man. I still, you know, the weather's perfect. I still love that, and it's still San Francisco. It's just, you know, I gotta the tell you, identity I, that I knew when I came here is gone, but I still love the place. This is my, my happy zone. My whole thing was, and it, it <laughs> will continue to be, that um, uh, San Francisco was very special to me. But when I was growing up, it wasn't. You know, when you grow up somewhere, you go, oh, I want to get out of here. I got to go see the rest of the world. I got to, you know, yeah, whatever. Exactly. I and, told about New York. I've and, been here. And I left and I went to, well, I went across the country seeking my fortune first in uh, uh-huh. uh, in in Minneapolis. I got a job in Texas, Houston, Texas, then Minneapolis, uh-huh. Minnesota. And finally, I wound up in New York. I didn't think I would ever wind up in New York. You know, yeah. when I, oh, I, I wound up in Chicago, and I remember saying to my wife, well, we, I got a job in Chicago. Uh, what's left? New York? Who, I, I'll never, yeah. it, who, who wants to move to New York? The next thing I know, would you like to come to New yeah. York? So, yeah, New York at the door. So I, I, you know, that's the way my life went. And so when I finally went back to San Francisco because I was looking for a job, and there was one in San Francisco that wanted me, uh, I went back. But reluctantly, because, you know, you going home, hey, the, the town, I remember all that. The first time I drove across the Golden Gate Bridge when I got back, I went, now I know what I've been missing. Yeah. <laughs> and it was true. Well, there was a lot going on in, too, so when you came back. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but now I know what I've been missing, because I looked out as I'm driving across the Golden Gate Bridge, and I looked one side, the ocean, I looked the other side, this magnificent city. I mean, it, it's photogra- uh, you know the, uh, you can take a photograph of San Francisco and there's no city that looks like that in the world. 
Exactly. And yep. I just went, God, it's good to be home again. You know, and, yeah. I, and I and I didn't realize how much I actually miss San Francisco. You know, uh, I, I figured my my well, my father was dead. I just, I just love it. I, yeah, you're, my father you're was roots, dead. Man. My father was dead. My mother uh, was uh, was there, of course. Uh, but mm-hmm. in fact, I slept on her couch when I first got back to San Francisco, so I could save uh. enough money to get an apartment. Uh, uh-huh. But it was, you know, it's kind of uh, a, 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 an amazing city. And now to it hear is, that it, it is not so damn amazing, it's bothersome. It really bothers you. you yeah. Know? It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. The bohemian element is gone. But the creative element seems to be gone. There's still people trying to do stuff, but God bless them. But uh, no, it's not. Obviously, not what it was in the 80s and being 30 plus years older. Has something to do with it, but uh, yeah, I could see me. I could see me taking my last breath of the Bay Area, you know, yeah. and not having any complaints. Well, I was, you know, I was living there on Telegraph Hill, um, uh, uh, doing my thing on Telegraph Hill when I was yeah. growing up, and I, I, I remember it with great uh, love and affection because that was a, that was an incredible neighborhood back in the day. And then my parents moved there because that's where all the Bohemians moved, you know. Yeah, uh, and uh, Bohemian folks that that gave way to the the beatniks, and that gave way to yeah. the uh, yippies, and the, uh, the hippies, and hippies, the zippies, and, the zippies, and, the zippies. and then uh, the, I don't know what that gave way to hip hop, I guess. <laughs> it gave way to the hippies who turned into people turning us down for loans at the bank. I'm sorry, <laughs> but we can't approve you. Hey, come on, freedom. What about the days of the communists? I'm sorry, that's all. Uh, yeah, that does. That do, that. Uh, what, what say you of these communes? Oh yes, I remember. I was on one with Wavy Gravy. Uh, oh, yes, I remember. But I recently foreclosed on it, and we're turning it into a Dow Chemical plant. <laughs> By the way, I, got, I don't know if anyone remembers Wavy Gravy, but he was a uh, a guy who was with a group called the hog farm the hog farm is true <laughs> and i i was asked to do a telethon for i think it was uh um uh, what do you call it cerebral palsy uh, or muscular dystrophy no, no cerebral palsy uh Deploy, and, the Dennis James one. <laughs> and i they, they they give me a teleprompter to read right and and so i'm reading it and it says blah 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 blah, blah. and uh look at these people uh this is the face of charity, the face, the face of, of cerebral palsy, and we show, and they take a shot of the uh, people answering the phones, and one of them is wavy gravy wearing clown makeup. <laughs> and I said, and then, and then I ad libbed as I looked back, and I went, but that's not the face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll also remember. Good old, Amy. Good old Hugh. I'll also remember that thing because they gave us a speech. We don't call it a handicapped. I said, "What?" And we don't call it handicapped. Do not use that term. I said, "Oh, okay, fine." They said, "The term we." I said, "What term do you use?" And she said, "Handy capable." Oh yes, handy capable. And I went, <laughs> "How <laughs> condescending really towards a gimp could you possibly be?" <laughs> You know, oh my God! I, I mean, I, I, the I, handy cape, I remember the that. handy capable. I said, and you, and you're trying to. Be, this is your idea of how you're sensitive to their plight. <laughs> I don't think they want to oh, be called Lord. handy capable. Oh, it's just a man. Yeah, they want to be called Hal or Susan or whatever their names are. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so it's it's Jeez, so it's it's sad what has happened to a city that that really I I grew up hating because I lived there. Most kids hate uh, where they live. Okay, sure. came back to absolutely love and adore and realize that I'd given up a lot by leaving. You know, yeah. And um, and I think when I went back there also because of just the way things were when I left, uh, I went back. Some people said, "How come you're a success in San Francisco?" And I said, "I came back to get even." <laughs> and I think I did. And I think I did in a big way because we were very successful there. And I said it was just my way of getting even, you know, with all the kids who beat me up yeah. in high school and all that, you know. <laughs> and my best moment were um, was when I went to my class reunion, and I'm walking around, and I'm, you know, I'm Bennett Schwarzman at the class reunion with the tag and everything. Yeah. And one guy comes up to me and goes, "You're Alex Bennett." 
<laughs> and I went, don't tell anybody, you know. Remember, <laughs> remember in school when I did Your all that idea. comedy shit? Well, it paid off, asshole, you know. <laughs> anyway, hey, it's good talking to you again, Stephen Pearl. Thank you, Alex. Man, good talk to you, and we'll do it again real soon. I totally enjoy it. I would say probably next week if we if if, I'll, if the gods I'll are willing. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the lovely, the attractive Stephen Pearl. Thank you, thank you very much, former, former Zither player for the Dave Clark Five. Thank you so much. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And here we are. Hi, everybody. How are you? This is me in person. This is Alex. And uh, let me uh, let me just uh, d- 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 turn on our Skype line so that people can call me uh, if they want to call me. Uh, it's going to be a feel-free night tonight, so you know that's that's always good. Uh, so uh, give us a call if you if you want to join us. Uh, uh, I don't have a hell of a lot to talk about, although I imagine. Uh, once our citizen, see, I don't like to start conversations right now because then when the citizens panel comes on, I've already kind of, you know, wasted it and and uh, had done with it, you know. So uh, I wait for people to start calling, and then we uh, we uh, you know. And here's how you call: you, you use Skype. You can use Skype. If you don't have Skype, go get it. Skype.com. That's where you get it. Give me your first name, last name. Uh, your email address and an ID you want to use, and it's free. You call me; it doesn't cost you a penny, and you get we get to see you and everything because it, it shows us you on camera. Uh, and all you have to do is call our Skype ID, which is Gabnet Live, G A B N E T L I V E. Or if you're not wanting to use that, okay, let me just uh, da, 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 let me just. I always have to go over and look at it because I never can remember the phone number. I should just put it right here. 347-352-0079. If you want to use your grandmother's telephone, remember those things? It's uh, 347-352-0079. We always prefer it if you call us using Skype, however. Uh, And here comes Scott Scott Boddicker. And why do we prefer people... Uh, using Skype, uh, Scott. Because it's easy. Because it's easy. It is really easy, isn't it? It is. I mean, everybody thinks I don't. I don't want to try the Skype. It's going to be. It's going to be uh, terrible and horrible and all that. No, you just all you do is you go up to Add Contact and go uh, Gabnet Live, and then uh, uh, I can approve you. But at the same time, if I don't approve you, I can still put you on now. And uh, you just uh, you just uh, dial you just go Gabnet Live. That's who I want to call, and it'll it'll come up. And you just another way to do it. You can go over to the Gabnet site, and there's a little thing there that says Call Skype, and you just click on that, and that works. Have you ever tried that? That's the only way I do it. Is that... I don't know how to do it off the regular Skype. I go to Gabnet, have to shut the little sound thing off, yeah, and then you click the button, then you have to. I say allow it or approve it or whatever. I really made that. And yeah. then, then you lose about 30 seconds of conversation. So you kind of come in a little cold, but you know, yeah, not, not bad. But, but nevertheless, not what bad. you're saying is, is that you, uh, you use that and then you go to Gabnet live, Gab, Gabnet.net, Gabnet.net. Gabnet. And then when we have a thing, it says call, Sk- it's, it's a call Skype button. And it just, uh, you have to have Skype working before it is. Yes. It yes. works, but right, you know, right. that'll do it. So. Yeah, otherwise, it'll. I don't know what it does, but it might do something. But anyway. Yeah, but it, 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 yeah, it, but you have to, if you don't have Skype running, then it doesn't go to that thing. I don't does think, it I don't, start Skype automatically for you? Does, I don't, I don't maybe it know. does. I don't know. Does I don't it? know. I'll have to try it next time. See what happens. Try it next time and let us know. Since, <laughs> since I never called this show, you know, I'm just dealing with people calling it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, feel free. Oh my God! It's Hello. a feel free night. And it's a Scott Full night. Oh, yeah, Jesus. yeah. That that was the thing that encouraged you to call, right? Uh, he, 
I, I told my wife, I said, he pissed me off so much last night. I said, I don't think I can ever call with him again on. I, I just, yeah. you need Phil more than you need me. But well, just, I, I need you. He just you. makes me a worse person I, I, I by need... some of the comments he says. Well, well, I, the I, things I, I think what, about. What did he say last night that pissed you off? Oh, when he said, oh, Jimmy Carter, he's not a humanitarian. They just prop him in a corner with a fucking hammer in his hand. Take a photo of him. Yeah, that, yeah, that was rather mean. Oh, that was just, that was just, that was despicable. You know, there are some people in this world who are just really good people. Yes. And, and maybe, maybe, they, maybe they weren't, didn't have your politics, or maybe they weren't good at being a politician or whatever, but they were good at being a human being. You know, like, I don't like John McCain's politics, but over the years, for a long time, I really liked the guy. Uh, because I thought he was a decent human being and his heart was in the right place. And he was the, he was the conscience of the Republican Party. You yes. know? Yeah. So. He, he, was, he was more... When he was on uh, The Daily Show a lot, mm -hmm. I loved him on The Daily Show. And then he ran for president and then he had to kowtow to the, to the, you know, the dregs of the Republican well, Party. Where he, lost, he where, changed yeah, a little bit. where he lost me was when he sold out to the Republican Party when he ran for president. Ra exactly. You know, rather than just be, hey, you know, okay, uh, he, uh, you know, he, he wasn't. Well, I just answered uh, Mike's uh, call again, and it's not working. Eh. I don't know what his problem is. I was oh, wondering wow. why I beat him in. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. Mike just calls any show not knowing what they're talking about. That's, that's his way of doing things. Was he? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I told my wife and said, "Yeah, I'm gonna have to be more like Tom Yamaguchi and 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 call in when I really, you know, need something or well, want to say well, something." Well, you know, the thing that you don't do because I think uh, you're 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 trying to uh, subvert your better self uh, is you should just yell at him at that point. You mean I should be more like Brian? You should be more like Brian, although Brian would just say motherfucking cocksucking shit, piss, moan, whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but, but. He can spew it, man. It's, it's like he should be a rapper or something. I don't know. He's got, he's got some ditties yeah, going. I, I, tell you. I didn't actually go after Phil for that last night. I think I just mentioned him br briefly that how can you say that about a guy yeah, that good, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. Anyway. I but mean. I know. Like I said. Why would you even say that? Why? And there's, 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 you know, this guy is not out there looking for press. The only reason he got press is because he dehydrated and passed out and had to take him to the hospital. Yeah, he does these I things. Think it was he, he, a house. he goes and builds these houses continually. I know. And, and they don't get publicity. You know, everybody knows he works for Habitat for the Humanities, and that's yeah. one of his favorite charity, I guess. You know. But uh, so it's just gonna be you and me tonight, I guess, huh? Wow, great! Yeah, it's kind of like your rampage. <laughs> yeah, like the rampage, the one show episode of the rampage. That's why I called it issue one, because <laughs> the next time I do it, it'll be issue two, right? But I didn't want to say I was going to do it every day, you know. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't know. You've been you. I don't know if you were listening, but within the last. A uh, couple of hours. Did yeah. you hear about Trump? No, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Now you see, I it, Scott. Uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Mike. Mike calls, and I try to you know answer him, and he doesn't. Oh, hold on a second. Let me see if I can call. He knows how to do it. Obviously, he's he, been on he, many he times. He knows how to do it, but he's he's got a problem of some sort. So I'll call him and let's see what happens. All right. Gee, I love your picture because it's so unlike you at the present time. Your, your photograph, and 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 Mike isn't answering. See, I'm calling him, trying to get him to be part of the. Oh, hey, you know who's calling? Who's coming online tonight? I, I just saw it, Tom Yamaguchi. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got, well, we got John Rockwell. Hello, John. Hello there, Alex. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. Hey, and, hey John. Uh, yeah. Uh, let me let me let me get Scott rid of, too. <laughs> let, me, let me get rid of uh, Mike. Uh, I, I tried. I tried, Mike. Tried to get you there, but uh, no. I, I, it's just that 
I, I, I've always felt that Jimmy Carter was not a great president. He just, you know. He, 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 the, the thing that Phil should love about Jimmy Carter is Carter trying to broker peace in the Middle East with Israel and, and Egypt and whoever the hell else is over there. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, he tried. And yeah. he did it till they killed Sadat, I guess. Yeah, but I mean, you know, there there are people you can. I was mentioning this, I think, to was it Bubbles yesterday or somebody? Oh, Ruben, that you know, I don't know anybody that could call him an asshole, but I know a lot of people call me an asshole. <laughs> you know, but I know that I, I I there are people in this world you can't call an asshole because they aren't. Nobody has anything bad to say about them. And yeah, you could you could say bad things about Carter's presidency that he wasn't a great president and he could have done better and he didn't handle things right. Whatever that doesn't matter. We weren't talking about Carter the president. We were talking about Carter the human being. Yeah. And uh, it, it's going to be a sad day for me when he goes, because he's the only president of the United States who ever wished me a happy birthday. Wow. Oh. Hey, that's that's cool. Because I call, you know, we called him. We had him on the phone. This was in San Francisco, and I guess somebody had mentioned about that today was my birthday and whatever. And he was hearing this on the other end of the sh line before we went on. And I went on. He said, "Oh, Alex, by the way, happy birthday!" And I I I went. I've just been said happy birthday to by a president of the United States. You know, now, not too bad. Hello, uh, Tom. We can't see your face because the light's in back of you, but. You know, that mysterious yeah. look that you engender. When you, oh, there we go. That's a little better. That's much better. Uh, so you called tonight because Phil isn't, right? Yeah, I called tonight because I'd rather you talk about something else. Than uh, Phil. Uh, talk, talk about something else uh, other than yeah, Phil. It's a, it's a thing of, you know, the thing is, yeah, it, it's Phil is always on, even when he's not on. Yeah. It's just like. When he's not on, you talk about him. You know, it's just like I just I decided <laughs> well, that the Ben Fra I decided Ben Franklin is wrong. Uh, okay. There, there are three things certain in life, and that's death, taxes, and Phil. Well, I'll tell you yeah. something. I think <laughs> that, and, and I might be wrong in in doing this because it it might give me more trouble than it's worth. But is there somebody else out there who has not called this program yet that is a rabid right winger? thinks Trump is wonderful, will you please call and give, give Phil a run for his money? <laughs> actually, you actually did have someone a number of weeks ago who to, uh, did say he identified himself as a Trump supporter. Yeah. And he sounded really interesting, and he, he hasn't called back since. Well, that's no fun. <laughs> if he was interesting. It, it was that it, SG uh, guy, SG. SG? Oh, that's yeah. right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know. I guess he didn't find the show interesting enough to call a second time. I don't know. But, Maybe not. But, uh, you know, I did. the only thing is I, I, I wish I had a guy like that who would call when Phil doesn't so that we have that angst, you know. Uh, it, it, I think that, you know, I, if somebody called me up and said, look, I'm for Trump and I think Trump's great and I think he's going to do a great job, get off his case, whatever. But he had an in, he had an informed approach to it. I would have to give him a certain props for at least having done his homework. Phil mm -hmm. looks at a headline and that's it, you know. Uh, and and so uh, if you're informed, we'd love to hear from you as well. So listen, uh, I don't know if you were riveted to your TV set, but I certainly was. Today. I was going to say, happy O.J. Parole Day. Uh, happy O.J. Parole Day. Yeah, you right. know something, look. Who, who what? thought that he would not be paroled today? I mean, really. I mean, why? I mean, he's been totally, you know, uh, uh, a puppy dog in the, in, at, in, in the, in, you know, for it, it, nine years. You know, yeah. no, no problems. Listen, no. It of went course by. He's get uh, I went nine fucking years ago. They put him in jail in Nevada. Yeah, nine years. I know. I found that yeah. impossible to, to believe. Time flies when you don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> he still looks good, though. I'll, I'll tell you well, what. He's, Actually, he's he looks better. He slimmed down. He slimmed. He slimmed. He slimmed down. The gray befits him. You know. Um, 
uh, as I said last night, you know, uh, uh, hold on a second. Let me uh, let me answer this. So we have Tony in the batch. Hello, Tony. Um, I, I see no Phil. I was just thinking of something funny. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. We're all celebrating. OJ party. <laughs> We're all celebrating, but we don't have to bring it up constantly. He's probably you know? driving to Juice on Blue Jail, Alex. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, I you know I mean I, I, as I said last night I said that I I felt number one. The sentence they gave him in Nevada was outrageous, mm -hmm. Com if, considering what happened. All right? Mm. all right, there were other people involved in that, and they didn't get that many years. They, I think one of them, the most, one other guy got two years. That was wow. it. And OJ I gets just... nine to thirty. Well, well, actually, because this is parole, I think it was supposed to be at least thirteen to. Or something. 15, no, it was supposed to be nine. I think it was supposed to be nine to th to thirty. Uh, like uh, uh, you become eligible for, for parole in nine years. That's why they have to wait till October first because that's the nine years. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought it was grossly unfair to him. No matter what you think, whether you think he, he he's the worst murderer of all time and he's the Jack the Ripper of Hollywood or whatever, you know. Then get him for that. If you can't get him for that, don't try to get him on something else and then make it like way out of line, just way out of line. And so I, I, I really felt he got a bad sentence in that particular case because of, of, of his past crime or alleged crime rather than that particular incident. Uh, I thought it was just, I, I, but I, I was happy today to see him get his parole. Uh, uh, it long uh, it, it should have been coming a long time ago and it didn't so anyway how do you guys feel about it oh uh, <clears throat> going around all the eight thousand channels that were all running the thing and then yeah. and then with their pundits afterwards was sort of interesting yeah. I was not too surprised that uh, was a Fox News had on uh, who was the guy that testified against uh, OJ by the the oh Furman, uh, Furman, whatever, Furman. Oh, as as a yeah. yeah, the guy that then that then got uh, got you know got shot off because he said the n word too often. <laughs> the, the cop, you know, yeah, that was the yeah. He was a pundit on the uh, was interviewed. Well, that's why Fox I hate News. the pundits. Duh. They also yeah. had Chris Darden. I mean, yeah. oh yeah. He, and my he, question he, is, he didn't like any of this. He, well, like, my question but, is why. You know, this has nothing to do with that with that OJ case. This has to do right. with this OJ case, and right. and Which neither where, of those guys. Where were the, as the experts? Where were the other guys who were involved that night in Vegas? You know, where were you? Why aren't you interviewing them? Why are you going to Chris Darden? You know, why are One you of going them testified to testified in his in OJ's behalf? One of the yeah, guys that OJ yeah. supposedly yeah. threw down on, or whatever. Yeah. And said, "Hey, you know, I I forgive you. I don't, you know, if you need a ride home, I'll drive you. you know, whatever. I mean, it was like, hey, you know, we not it's done. You know, whatever. I would love to it have been wasn't... a fly on the wall of that parole board because they said, uh, as opposed to when we usually wait a couple of weeks before we make these decisions, we want to get this out of the way so we can get back to work without all the, uh, you know, people knocking on our door and, and asking See, how's us questions." as a certain person would say it, a lot. It, exactly. So uh, they said, we're going to go uh, 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 talk for 30 minutes and we'll be back. I have a funny feeling they went minutes. into that room and went, well, anybody want have anything they want to say? Nah, this is, nah, we're, this, is a, this is a lock. We all know what we're going to do. <laughs> but, you know, we got to give it 30 minutes to say we deliberated. Let's have a beer, you know. <laughs> yeah. Go back. Yeah. By the way, oh, if, if, yeah. if, um, if Mike is listening, Mike, unless you can stay on. Don't try tonight, okay? You don't seem to be getting, uh, you seem to be getting hung up on for one reason or another. Reboot your machine or something, but, you know. Don't yeah, keep annoying not. us by calling and then having the call not grab. You know, after a few mm -hmm. tries, give the fuck up. That's how I feel about it. Anyway. <laughs> He's one, of the more interesting, one of the more interesting pundits, though, was Alan Dershowitz. Yeah. Who actually, I think, had a very good... You know, as they said, what would you recommend OJ do at this point? And he said, "When you know, it was my advice low, from last low, night about what he should have don't get into yeah, don't it, get into uh, don't go on to you know uh, uh, do a lot of interviews, don't do any uh, TV or anything. Go 
go back, go to Florida. If they'll let you go to Florida, be with your kids. Just, just do. No. You don't need. Well, it's what to, I said last night. Try to make night. anything out of this, yeah. and, and then all the people that thought you killed your wife are going to come after you and and do all sorts. You know, you you're not. It's better if you just you know you've done your time for this thing. Yeah. Just well, it's what I said. Was what I said stay. last That's night that he should have done. That he should have done after he got found not guilty in the murder trial. And I, that was, I said, he should have laid low. He didn't, wouldn't have to lay low forever. Just lay low for quite a while, you know. Oh, yeah. Just well, to of go did. to Europe, go, go on vacation, go to an island somewhere, just disappear, don't talk to anybody, and then maybe like, you know, five years later, surface, okay? And, and then, uh, I, in fact, it was funny. Uh, years ago in San Francisco, I had Larry King on my show. And we did mm -hmm. it from some location. We weren't doing it from the studio. So right after the show, Larry and I went out and had breakfast together. And it was during the whole, oh, I guess, uh, the aftermath of the, of the OJ thing. And he said, mm -hmm. you know, he said, if uh, OJ Simpson would just go in front of the public and say, we had the trial, I was found not guilty, but I just want to tell you, I did it and I'm sorry. He said he'd have a series right now, you know, because America, for, America, America number one loves, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it when you say you're sorry? Uh, and uh, uh, an atoner. Yeah, they love the it. Mea culpa. Huh? Well, you know, mea people, culpa. people do the mea culpa, mea culpa. and uh, they're very honest about it and say they're sorry. Okay. All of a sudden, you're all right, even if he committed murder. Oh, my God. He's terrible. Imagine he well, he had the him. civil case that basically went against him, and he still owes millions of dollars to the gold yeah, the and all case, that stuff. The civil case does not count because it, 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 it doesn't demand the same level of proof that a criminal right. trial demands. It can be very, it can be very uh, almost spurious. You don't have to really ha make your case. Uh, you just got to find a, a group of people who go, yeah, give them the money. You know, you know what's interesting, though? You might be right, Alex, because it's really a tragedy. But I would just love to know really what exactly happened that night. Maybe he came forward like, and he just yeah, lost. Yeah, I like to think of it this him. way. Every now and then, people get it's, cranky. But he was really cranky. <laughs> what? Was, was there more there than going, you know? Is look, look, you know, I, I, and Tom knows this because I, I think I was this way when I was in San Francisco. I kept saying, you know, the guy was found not guilty, so therefore mm -hmm. you have to presume innocence. Yeah, you know, you have to accept, you have to accept the 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 jury's ruling exactly, yes. and yes. you have to give him the benefit of that as well. In other words, you you can't deny him work because you think he murdered his wife or whatever. Whatever you think deep down in your mind, you should not verbalize because in this society, we say, "Hey, you're not guilty, therefore you can get on with your life." You know, mm -hmm. you 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 pr proved yourself to not be uh, a uh, uh, it, you proved in court that you didn't murder somebody, uh, you know, or at least it wasn't said you did. And you know that, what I mean? But, but no, no, wait, but, they, but that you give oh, people the benefit of that doubt. Otherwise, we're subverting maybe one of the main, uh, sta uh, uh, what, boy, I can't, I can't talk to speak the English language tonight. Um, <laughs> you're, 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 you're violating one of the main codicils of our, of our society. Uh, and and that is that we have jury trials, and we don't just immediately make people guilty. You're not you're not guilty until you prove yourself innocent. You're innocent until proven guilty. And and in his case, he was never given that benefit by anybody. And when people ask me, well, you you don't think he did it? And I said, I don't know that he did it. I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. You know, but certainly uh, the. Uh, uh, the, the prosecutors in that case did such a lousy job, we'll never know whether he really did it or not. I mean, he could be protecting somebody, he could have been protecting somebody close to him, uh, it could have been a, a drug deal gone bad, it could be any one of a number of things. But we don't look at those, oh yeah, it's got to be OJ. You know, well, hey, it may have been OJ. Good chance it was OJ. 
but um, let him get on with his life. On the other hand, don't give him a, a reality show because he killed his wife. And because you assume he killed his wife. And because he wound up in jail somewhere. I mean, that's the wrong reason to do it. You know. Mm-hmm. But did anybody see the see him today? Did you a watch it? I saw bits and pieces. Was of he it. charming or what? I mean, that guy actually, still can put he, on the actually, charm when he, he has to. He was a little still. The ego was there. Mm-hmm. He wasn't. I mean, he he was contrite, but he also was talking about having a relatively, you know, relatively blameless life or calm life until all the, all this what, happened. What did he, what did he, he say? For. I've had a conflict. Like, oh, yeah, no, way, here's what he said. He said, up until so now, my life has been conflict free. And I'm going, uh, yeah, do you right. remember what went on in L.A.? <laughs> do you remember, remember that year you spent in jail while they were having a trial? That wasn't exactly yeah. conflict free. <laughs> He's in his own world, really. It's gotta be. Imagine talking to him. Nothing. It's like upside down world. <laughs> but but he still had the ability to exude that charm that would sell, you know, a rent a car. You know, he was a phenomenal player. Uh, I, I really so I hear. I, I don't follow. I think football. he ran for two thousand yards in the twelve game season. If I'm not correct, <laughs> really, which is like unheard. Of. Well, you know, somebody, some people, like we were saying last night, said if he did it, it might have been brain damage from all that football. Yeah, I said that. I think yeah. it could well, be. The well, end. Well, well, you have your hand up, uh, uh, Tom. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, that I heard that last night. And I, it certainly makes a lot of sense, you know, that uh, that there could have been a brain injury that uh, that's related to this. Yeah. I mean, I but I mean, it, 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 there are any number of different answers. But the only answer that we need to have uh, and and live with is the fact that a jury of his peers found him not guilty. Oh, you know what they actually? Yeah. On the OJ thing, you know what I didn't understand about the case. Oh, by the way, pe- people. Wait, before you go ahead, some people okay. say, "Well, yeah, but found him not guilty, but didn't find him innocent." Well, don't say that. Because there is no such thing as innocent in a court of law. There's only guilty and not guilty, okay? You can't come back. What's your verdict? Our verdict is innocent. No, it's not. It can't be. Is it guilty or not guilty? So don't well, give me that I, bullshit it's, it's, about he never was found innocent. It's actually innocent before until proven guilty. Ah, very good. Tom. Yeah. So, you know. so it's really not proven guilty is what he got. That yeah. was the, uh, we couldn't prove he was guilty. Right. Yeah. yeah. See that. Yeah. I've been on. I was on a, uh, a grand jury uh, about five or six years ago, and we went in the space of a month. We did like a couple of hours every day, like from eleven to one or ten to one, like Monday through Thursday or something for a month. And I must have listened to the introductory things from mostly from the cops on at least fifty cases. Two of them we sent on, or or we didn't send on. The other ones all automatically. They what was given to us in the way of evidence, which was mostly one sided, you almost never heard from the defense was, you know, enough to say, well, that should go to a court and let the court let's let a jury figure if that's right. Sometimes you're like, oh, my God, that guy's got to be guilty. It's just too much. But other times, the one or two times that the that the that the 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 the, 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 plaint, the defendant actually came and talked to us or their lawyer came and talked to us. We let him go. I didn't. I mean, I, I, I still thought both of those cases merited somebody a real trial. But the other people in our group, we had like about 25 people or something. It's a big grand jury, you know, and, and we just, just whipped them on through. So it's the old idea of, you know, uh, we can we couldn't say it's not guilty, but they are. You know, but let's take it to a trial and then it can be, you know, make yeah. sure that that this is. That, that we're right. <laughs> let, let me let me talk to you about. This. I mean, as long as we're talking about trials and everything, uh, as you know, I'm involved in a current legal battle regarding this apartment. Uh, and uh, we went and last year, I guess we did a, a, a deposition, which we told our side of the story, and you know, we got asked questions by his lawyers, and we told our side of the story, and it was all put down on paper. And then the uh, landlords, who were also being sued by him, uh, put all their, you know, said what they had to say, and that was all put down on paper. Then all of a sudden, uh, this guy, because he's stalling like crazy, decides he's going to ask the judge for a uh, uh, what's called a uh, 
Just a, 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 what do you call it, to throw the whole case out and, and find him innocent. Acquittal. You know, find him, no, not an acquittal. Uh, a summary judgment in his be, on his behalf. And to throw out our claim of illusory tenancy and the landlord's claim of whatever, whether it was their reverse suit. And uh, because he said he wanted to have a, a declaratory judgment, he wanted to have the kind of a judgment made, we have to file an affidavit on why we don't think he should. Now, there's probably no way he can. There are too many issues involved in this case to make, it, make him be able to do that, okay? But he can still ask for it. And when he asks for it, we have to file an affidavit. And so I get the affidavit today that my lawyer wrote. Uh, and I'm sitting there reading it and going, this is just what we said in the, uh, in, in the d deposition. Why are we doing everything a second time? Now we're putting it down on paper. Well, here, I know, money, money, money. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm so distressed about it because I, we already went through this part of it. Why do I have to write again? Can't the judge just look at the deposition or, you know, or, or look at the case on the merits so far and, or have the, the various guys come in and argue whether they should be, he should be given a summary judgment? Uh, because there is no case for a summary judgment here. There are too many factors involved. So here we are once again doing it. And because it's Marjorie and I, she's got to sign a separate uh, 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 affidavit than mine, which is identical, okay? Uh, but, I mean, it's just, can't we simplify the legal process, you know? <laughs> I mean, I've been going through this for three fucking years. Mm -hmm. And we're not any closer to a solution, you know. And he's not going to get a summary judgment. I'm sure of that. But, you know, he's throwing all these little things in the way to try and block it. And, and the law allows him to do this. And they should say, hey, uh, send, just send me a copy of the, uh, of the depositions and I'll make a judgment based on that. But no, they had to, I had to write this paper and then I got to call the guy tomorrow and he's got to rewrite one of the paragraphs because it's not exactly what went on. And I just, you know, it's just, it's exhausting me. What do people do? And you got to pay the lawyers. <laughs> well, luckily, um, Marjorie has a, a loan, not a loan it's, a, it's a loan she gets on her apartment uh, that mm -hmm. we're paying for all of this with. We have, we, so far, we've got most of it all paid off. Uh, but still, I mean, to date, it's maybe cost us 10 grand, 15 grand. And what if you're somebody who doesn't have 10 or 15 grand? And you really <laughs> do have a case, but you can't afford it because some asshole lawyer somewhere is constantly throwing paper at you. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, I'm sure that's why the guy did it. So we're going we're gonna to extend this thing out by trying to get summary judgment. We, I'm probably not going to get it, but hey, it'll stretch it out well, even longer. They did try. They wanted a yeah. jury trial. The judge denied that. And now they want a summary judgment. And there are just too many factors in the case that have to be <clears> argued <throat> in front of the judge. You can't, you can't just do a summary judgment on this. But we still have to file, you know, four pages of legal right. paper that are probably going to wind up cost, costing us five grand. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that, I don't know, there's something wrong there because we did this already. This has all been said before. Um, the only thing is, I every now and then when I'm going to sleep at night, I, re, I, I, re, uh, I do a deposition on myself. <laughs> uh, no, I do. I, I lie there, I lie there in bed, and I start reciting what I would be doing in the deposition again because I want to keep remembering the facts. Because as time has passed, I would even have to look back at the deposition to see some of the facts. Because you forget, you're going to forget them. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, it, Amazing. All this should be faster. You know? But uh, we're, we're, we're... What do you think, Tom? You're quiet over well, there. Well, as far as, as your memory goes, at least if everything's written down, you've got that. So you, could, you don't have to worry about memory. Yeah. If there's anything that isn't written down, you should write it down. It, it, you know, well, you should, yeah. You know, I mean, you, it's all written. The deposition the, was pretty thorough, then I wouldn't yeah. worry about that. Well, the deposition was thorough, but, you know, then, it, then, then you got to go to court at some point. Okay. 
here, I just uh, put on, uh, no, uh, uh, hey, give up, will you, Mike? Just give up. <laughs> it ain't working. You know, He's probably try still, tomorrow. I mean, I'll, I can try. <laughs> call, probably must I, I load about OJ. I'll try calling him again. Oh, no, now, now that's completely lost, so, eh, fuck him. Well, I see his, I see Oh, there him. he is, there, there he is. What, what's been your problem? You, you've been so annoying, Mike. You've been so annoying tonight. What did I do wrong now? Constantly trying to call and not being able to get on. You know, if you, if it doesn't work two times, give up for the night. True. What's the True. True. Yeah. You know. Awfully choosy for a beggar, are you, Mister Bennett? What? What? I said you're being awfully choosy for a beggar, aren't you, Mister Bennett? What do you mean a beggar? Beggars can't be choosers. You're always uh, you're always moaning and complaining when when uh, you're low on per audience participation on your program. And yeah, here's but, this guy's yeah, but, doing his due diligence and trying to get on, and for no and due to factors beyond his control, he can't. But nevertheless, he still persists, and you're discouraging him from uh, uh, getting on. I've been right. I, I, I've been I've been nailed by Brian. Yes, that's a good thing. Yeah, you have. <laughs> Brian, what do you think of O.J. Simpson's uh, thing today? I don't care. Well, furthermore, the uh, sign on the, you were talking about your legal problems. And, uh, just, uh, you know, if you can afford the paperwork that's being hurled at you by uh, yeah. lawyers yeah. with with pens or swords. Uh, a sign on the episode, old episode of The Simpsons sums it up best in terms of our judicial system, with liberty and justice for most. For most, yeah, yeah. Well, you know something? I got to tell you, uh, I, uh, um, I I just feel that somewhere. I mean, if I were if I were a judge, and somebody threw some of the stuff at me, and I knew all the paperwork that was going to have to be done, I would just say, "Fuck you! No, no summary judgment. That's it. I don't want to hear anything." You know. It's just, it, it's just, uh, it's frustrating. It's very frustrating. Uh, and, you know, as I get older, uh, it becomes a little more of a, more stressful than it used Your to be. Patience dwindles. Yes. Yeah. In the old days, they just go, oh, well, if it doesn't work out, I'll just, I don't know, go to another state or something like that, you know. <laughs> You, 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 as you get older, you don't have the resiliency you once had. I was mentioning mm -hmm. that, I think, to Stephen Pearl tonight. And that was that uh, in the old days, uh, if need be, I'd sleep on somebody's floor. Mm -hmm. You know? I don't think I could do that anymore. You know? I remember going to Washington to speak in front of a congressional committee, and I di didn't have a place to stay, but I, we knew somebody who had an apartment, so I slept on their floor. You just brought to mind something I, I said yet last night on Jack's program that he took, I guess, fake umbrage or some umbrage to, uh, offense <laughs> to, in regards to uh, uh, Bob Dylan. I made mention of the fact that the guy's pushing 80 now, and that, uh, you know, He's not going. What I was basically saying is that he's not going to want to do the touring thing as extensively and as hard as he did when he was in his 20s or 30s back in the 60s and early 70s or whatever. And you know, he kind of, you know. Well, you wonder what happens to people as they get older. I'll give you an example. Of, you know, and I don't blame him. The what? I, that's what I'm well, saying. I wasn't doing it out of disrespect. Okay. I don't blame him. Now, I'm like, let right me now, let me I'm give you an example. Fine. You got a guy like Billy Joel. People and suck. Billy Billy Joel does a performance every month at Madison Square Garden. He's been doing it for, I don't know, several years now, right, uh, John? Yep, yep, uh, yep. And sold out crowds every time. In fact, they put the ads up about October. He's going to do another one. We're putting them on sale now, you know. And he, he gets up and he does it. It's supposedly a great show. Everybody loves it. And he goes home with a lot of money. Tell me the last song he's written. He has done it a long since. And, and, it, it, right, right, Scott? It's you're an giving, oldie show. You, you're giving me the, <laughs> the no sign. It's, you're absolutely right. At what point do these people stop writing mm -hmm. songs? How about Carol King? When's the last, what's the last song she wrote? Well, I don't know. I want to see the play. That's supposed to be good. Well, it didn't sell, yeah, the, obviously. The, 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 play, the play sucks. It does? Yes. 
Oh, way. Uh, beautiful. Uh, because, exactly and the, the reason I think it uh, sucks is it may have been better when it first opened up on Broadway, but now it's into its third or fourth uh, cast, and well, they here. go in there every <laughs> night and do it night after night, and it looks like they're walking through it. But on the other hand, on the flip side, you got somebody, as Jack was pointing out, someone like uh, Keith Richards and the Rolling Stones, if they want to do the same shit at 80 that they were doing and at the same pace with the same stamina relatively that they were doing when they were in their 20s and 30s, you know, for as far as I'm concerned, more power. Yeah, but I don't think they have the same. But I don't, I don't think they have the same stamina. I think no, they, have, the, they have a different stamina. I don't stamina. have the same stamina at 35 that I did at 25. Yes, uh, uh, Mike. Same with Neil Diamond. Neil Diamond, he's up in age. He still goes at it till to the nail. No, but he, uh, tell me a new song he's written. It's been a while. You know what I'm saying? Here's, that's what I'm saying. There is some reason why at a certain point these people still keep performing because, you know, that's the way they make a living. But, mm-hmm. but, but they don't write anything new. And, and you wonder, well, how does that happen? Or at least nothing that gets on the charts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or, or, an audience, or, or, or a guy who, uh, I, I can name a guy who had maybe like seven, eight, nine, ten hits in a row. And then all of a sudden, no more hits. What? How does that happen? Mm-hmm. You would think, oh, well, maybe your next hit doesn't hit number one like those did. And maybe the one after that hits number seven and you start fading away. But no, this guy, Huey Lewis, had I don't know how many hits in a row. And all of a sudden, nothing. Yeah, what happened to you? What happened? I had to you know? out. Yeah, I, so I don't know how that happens. I think I think... At a certain point, you run out of ideas. That could be it. Yeah, yeah. And that you could burn out. Become a or burn out popularity. Being, you know, <laughs> being that it's a photogenic uh, atmosphere, and it has to be a telegenic and not photogenic anymore. Uh, that uh, you know, if you come up with a hit song and you're in your 70s, it's going to sell more. If you uh, have someone by proxy who's in their 20s sing it for you, perform it for you. Yeah. Versus you doing it yourself. I mean, it's 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 not fair, but you know it's well. I mean, yeah, age, age, age does make people get precious, but you know, Bob Dylan doesn't look any worse now than he did when he was twenty. <laughs> <laughs> he looked pretty right. bad back. Then. He looked pretty bad back then. I would beg the difference. A few more, a few more wrinkles here and there on the face, but that's about it. The types yeah. that certain people are attracted to, many some many women and some okay. men. I'll you know, tell they you, like I'll, that grungy. Dirty. I'll tell you what mm-hmm. what happened with Bob Dylan is he was very good in the beginning. Some very good stuff, great stuff. First he wrote anthems, okay, blown in the wind, shit like that. Then he wrote what we would consider rock classics like Subterranean Homesick Blues and stuff like that when he went to the when he went away from just doing the guitar to going with a, a, a band. And then he went through a period of just sucking. And that went on for about 20 years. And all of a sudden, he comes out the other side. It's like Elton John. Yeah. He, he comes out the other side with a, just like a rebirth of the kind of stuff he had been doing when he was younger. And it was really terrific stuff. You know? So, I mean, you have that kind of rebirth. You know? What? What are you going to say, Brian? We're only human. You you try new things, you fail at them, and then... You... Yeah. Adjust your uh, adjust your mechanism, adjust your methods, and yeah. if it works, it works. If it doesn't, well, yeah. try something else or yeah. just quit. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, so um, uh, on to uh, something that we probably shouldn't be talking about, and that's our president. Dump. Oh, the state of Marshmallow Man. It's, it's, <laughs> he's getting to look like it. Yeah. All he has to do is take off his wig. Uh, uh, sailor hat. Otherwise known as Fuckface Von Clownstick. <laughs> Fuckface Von Clownstick. <laughs> that's, that's a Facebook group. I can't take credit for that. I thought that was hilarious. Fuckface that's, Von Clownstick? That's what they call him. <laughs> Fuckface Von <laughs> Clownstick. Ah. Wow. So, Al, well, they have a why, picture of him like this. What? what why what? should we, uh, why should we not be what? talking about him? What did you say, Tom? Why should we not be talking about him? Well, yeah. uh, it's kind of like Voldemort. If you say his name, you give him power. 
Uh, or more more succinctly, he's an attention whore, and we're basically playing into it. Well, mm. uh, but uh, you know the thing that but, gets you know, me he is the is president. He hires people because he thinks he thinks they'll well, be. He is the president uh, by legal uh, definition, and that has that yeah. that has a cause and effect. Well, I mean, President Trump is an oxymoron after all. Uh, Philosophically, I more, more than one sense of the word. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> legally. The thing is that uh, his latest affectation is he hires people who he then would like to fire because they don't agree with him. Because he wants this Russia thing to go away. And, and he's not going to go away. And he's, 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 he's going to fire That's anybody. To he's mad at Jeff Sessions because Jeff Sessions recused himself on the Russia issue. Which is the only thing Jeff Sessions could have done decently, okay? Because he was too close to that story. He wanted Jeff Sessions to be on the Russia thing, so he'd then take care of it for him. You know, it's just getting insane what this guy thinks he can get away with. Yes, Tom? Well, just before I came on, I saw another news story. They had just hired hmm. a guy to uh, coordinate communications uh, on the staff and get everybody, uh, you know, with the, you know, well, get everybody on the same page. And uh, he quit. He gave up. He says, he's got, I have all the money I need. I don't need any of this. You and don't he need this left. shit. Here, here, here you go. Here, here, here we go. The latest, uh, the latest headline is President Trump's aides are said to be investigating Robert Mueller's team looking for ways to discredit his Russia inquiry. Yeah, that's the Washington Post article that's also out tonight. It's also, in, it's, the it, it, it's also the New York Times as well. Well, it's originally with the Washington yeah, Post. Yeah, well, I, I see here. It's the Washington Post, and right above it, the New York Times, I guess, is parroting it. Uh, yeah, they, they picked it up from the Post. Uh, it is really ridiculous because he appointed Mueller, didn't he? No, no, no. The assistant, the, the acting, well, the assistant attorney general who is uh, taken over because uh, because Sessions has recused himself. He appointed Mueller. Oh, he did appoint. He yeah. appointed Mueller, okay. and that was after uh, Trump made the screwed well, up and 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 suggested their possibility of tapes of his uh, conversation with Comey, which forced Comey to to. Uh, to release his memos that he'd written because he was afraid that, that, that Trump would try to distort what was said in the meeting. And so Trump's, his own, Trump's own doing is that once again his own, own doing because otherwise there wouldn't have been a special prosecutor uh, set up yeah. because of that. Well, because it's a special prosecutor, it's supposed to be an independent uh, prosecutor. Right, it, it, you know the president should not be diddling with this whole thing and trying to get rid of him or discredit him, but let him do his work. Now maybe I'm he, like who knows? He, <laughs> he, you know, I mean, he. If I were, if if I were innocent, let's say, he's not. which <laughs> clearly is not. Just like with that thirteen-year-old girl, he's not. But he well, well, her too, just like he's diddling yeah. with the details here. Yeah, well, well, but, but, but if I were innocent. And I knew that I didn't do anything wrong. I'd say, let Mueller do with it, do whatever he does. He's going to come out with. He's going to show that I had nothing to do with it. Yeah. You know, instead. Oh, it he, is a soap opera. That's all oh, it is. God. Thank you. And if you and Alex said, exactly the questions saying. of whether you can pattern yourself. That's just that's just an academic he, inquiry. All this it? drama he, makes you go. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, it, 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 Trump. All he wants to do is t he thinks. Quote, he get get rid of Russia. No, you got your son-in-law, you got your uh, uh, way caught. Your own son is in trouble. Yeah, and the son, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uday. Whatever that, whatever the asshole is. Uh, he's Uday. He Half a dozen Uday. cabinet members. So this is a guy. Who's other, other people, you know, he's going to get himself a beach, which he's going. To, he's going. He's going to get it. Oh, you want to hear? You want to hear the latest? According to CNN. Oh. Uh, investigation finds Jared Kushner's White House connection is still being used to lure Chinese investors. Oh, boy. I mean, <laughs> wow. 
Here's my question. If Trump didn't become president, what kind of problems would he have right now? Would he be bankrupt or coming close to it? Is that a possibility? No. no. He owes Deutsche Bank $10 million. That's right. <laughs> well, I will like say that. this. Yeah. That's the next that. bank that's going to be involved, you know, yeah. that's going to be in, involved in this. They're just talking about uh, uh, Mueller talking to Deutsche Bank about some of what, uh, of, of how much, the, you know, getting more information on what Trump owes and that, you know, and why and, and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, uh, Brian, uh, what were you trying to say? I was just going to say about Jared Kushner again that uh, to me he's kind of looked like, he kind of looks like uh, uh, Ashton Kutcher's closeted gay, closeted cat killing cousin. <laughs> okay. The one, the thing that the thing that I don't, I don't, you know, I've thing. seen Jared Kushner, okay. and I don't think much of Jared Kushner, but I don't know that I could describe him that way. <laughs> I could see him sneaking around in a bathhouse somewhere in uh, New York, or yeah. By the way, we've been joined by Tim. Hello, Tim. Uh, good evening. This is Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, I'm subbing for him tonight. You're subbing for because Phil. Oh, I need God. No, but I just called in to say that Trump is definitely innocent of any Russian collusion, but he's guilty of a lot of other crimes, including money laundering, conspiracy, uh, stuff under the well, RICO Act. Well, 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 but and, he, and that's yeah. what he's afraid of now. Well, well no, here's what, I, here's, 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 New York mafia and all that. here's what I'm saying. As what the question I proposed here was... If Trump didn't win the election, how much trouble would he be in right now? Would well, I mean? He, Ferrara, would, the uh, U.S. attorney was investigating that building in New York under RICO, uh, including Man, I think Manafort's involved in that too. What under RICO for what? Um, Manafort uh, was getting money. Uh, was getting worked for the middleman that got the gas that went from Russia to Ukraine, the middleman got, you know, he got the gas for, for almost free. He charged 10 times the going, the going rate to Ukraine. And that was, that was a, that's how uh, Putin controlled what happened in Ukraine. And uh, he was on the voting council there. Wait, 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 you get, you're really confusing me here. <laughs> I mean, you're 10 steps ahead of me on this one. Uh, uh, wait a minute, uh, uh, yes, Mike? Aren't they also going to investigate his financial doings? And Trump says he's kind of, kind of having a little hissy fit over that. Well, no, all I'm saying is is that, that uh, I mean, I don't know about the RICO uh, acts, but I do think that he would be in a lot of financial trouble right now. Financial oh, trouble. Bro- yeah, he'd be broke. Yeah, I mean, financial trouble. Again financial trouble he's avoiding at the present time because a lot you can't really go after a president on a lot of things until after he's president am i right about that tom i may be wrong um well i i think yeah i i, I yeah i think i get you're you're getting you're getting it. yeah that the the legal the criminal uh which stuff would happen after after he leaves office that would that is put on hold they can't they can't uh try him for anything criminal until he actually leaves office. They can impeach him still. Oh, yes, they can impeach him, yes. And, and the other thing they might try, that he's asked his legal counsel to see if he can pardon himself and family right, ahead of time. Uh, yeah, they, he did. Right, I was just going to say, that's the most recent thing. Yeah. And, 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 and if the, he does, they'll, they'll have to file charges immediately to move it to the Supreme Court, not let him pardon himself now for the future because they'll destroy the all the records. Pardon him. So then they would have to file charges. Wow. Yes, yes, Mike. And, that, and, Mike, hold and on. the court but, that, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yes, Mike. But it also, did Trump says that his uh, financial deal, he would not release it? Which I, I, I thought all the president was supposed to release a certain amount of his financial... His taxes. His taxes. taxes. Right. Yeah. But that's if he doesn't that's only do a that... Custom. That's it's true. It's, it's a custom. Yeah. It's a it's custom. I don't think it's. Custom, it, I, I don't think it's. I don't think there's a rule that you have to. Am I right? There about isn't. It? Hey, there's a rule in the alternate universe we used to live in, 
there's no rule in this universe. <laughs> oh, it's customer. As you said, Tim, it's customary. It's not required. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. But n nobody would, that could be elected president would would go, do what he's doing. Yeah. So we're in a, we're in a strange world now. So. Yeah. Well, it's a bizarre yeah. world. Yes. Uh, Tom's got his hand up. Yeah. Uh, so so. The, the thing about the taxes is it looks like Mueller will be, is, has access to them and, and can use them as a part of the investigation. Although we were talking about that. the Post article, uh, the, uh, Trump's legal team right now is they're doing everything they can to put obstacles uh, into extending the investigation in those areas that they were talking about, uh, things that were happening before office, you know, like the sale of the house in Florida to a Russian and the uh, apartment houses, uh, you know, the apartment houses uh, in uh, in New York and stuff like that. There were gambling uh, operations and money laundering and the from money the apartments they rent from him. Yeah. So they're, they're, the Trump's lawyers are saying this is outside the investigation and people are thinking that this is is the, the basis that Trump is going to use to actually fire Mueller. Do you know why he, he humiliated Sessions? <laughs> No. <laughs> sooner or later, he's going to let Sessions go. Then he can appoint somebody, and he won't appoint anybody unless they will agree to, to get rid of Mueller. That's his way through, because Rodenstein, the guy in the middle, the, the career guy, won't do it. And you'd have to go down to somebody like Bork. Remember Bork? Yeah. Well, you, yeah. Know, you know what's happening now? I think what, what's happening with Trump is that Trump is slowly losing his alliances. In other words... He appoints Sessions, who's his pal, who went out, you know, uh, campaigning for him and everything. Uh, he, he gets to be attorney general, and when he isn't doing what Trump likes, all of a sudden he starts getting in, you know, uh, tweets like crazy. And the point is that I think that eventually a guy like Sessions goes, you know, this guy is trying to get away with murder here, and we can't, I can't let him. You know, that, that it's just gotten so egregious that these guys were... You think were, Sessions has a conscience well, to do no, that? I, I, I think he's got enough of a conscience. Nope. Not a lot. Or he doesn't want to go Scott. down with him. No, Maybe I he doesn't think. want to go down with him. Yes, you went uh, no, say, Scott. I, I oh, yeah, save his ass. Wait a minute. No, it you went no. It depends who's, who has a bigger blackmail case against him. You, That's what I think. You, 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 you nodded no. Scott, if if he had any kind of conscience or whatever, he would have resigned once Trump said he was, you know, didn't want him anymore. You know, he he's just another dirt bag that'll just do whatever he says to keep going. But it appears now that he's on Trump's shit list. Well, he, yeah, he doesn't care. He's still getting you paid. Gotta, hey, Alex, you know what this is. This is a teaser for next week's show. They got to have some politics. They got to have some drama around sessions, and then they'll get rid of him next week. It so, keeps more audience. Is, uh, so, in other words, it's, this is this is the reality show we're living with that uh, is called the United States well, government at this point. And that why next, did he say that stuff to the New York Times reporters and threaten Mueller and all this stuff? It's all theater. What my question is: If he hates the New York Times, what's he doing being interviewed by the New York Times? I, I what's think the he, New York Times doing? Then you know, he can say it's all fake. Huh? I, I think he he's can got say they got it wrong. Or, or he's got a, a, a learning, a, a developmental disability. Not a bad one, but we all have, like, I know people that are, have uh, yeah. um, all kinds of little syndromes, but they're not bad. You wouldn't even know it, like Asperger's yeah. and stuff like that. Tom, you had your hand up? Yeah, I was just saying, uh, yeah, one thing that New York Times, he'll, he'll talk to anyone who gives him attention. We've already established that. He'll talk to the New York Times, and he's completely impulsive. So, so he'll just say what 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 he's thinking at the moment. He he, and not even considering the ramifications. And I think that's the context the way, where he started going mouth it off about about Sessions. I guess think he just wasn't really thinking about what he was really saying and the implications and putting once again putting Sessions on the spot putting the, the White House press corps on, on the spot to try to explain. They're constantly trying to explain what he's thinking because he, he just says what he's, what, what, what's at the top of his head at the moment. And that's why that, that, uh, that uh, communications director resigned. 
You have your hand up. You know, he said he loved holding hands with Macron over uh, Macron or whatever it is in France. Not you know why? Because uh, the, the president of France treated him like a king in Paris. Yeah. He couldn't turn it down. Uh, John, you have your hand up. Yeah. Uh, looking with the sound off at MSNBC, their caption at the bottom is a Washington Post uh, saying that the White, White House aides were, quote, stunned that Sessions didn't resign. <laughs> that's the current. That's yeah, what they're arguing exactly, about now. What exactly. Brian Williams is arguing about now. So, yeah, what do we uh, You know, in, in the justice area of the Justice Departments and so on, are we just going to have a new person every week? Is that what this is? That's what it is. It's, it's just like, like say, I'm the president, okay, in the United States. You're fired, you're fired, you're hired. You're fired. You're hired. You're fired. Yeah, but he's running this. He's running the government like he ran the Apprentice, and this isn't a reality show. <laughs> I heard he's considering Judge Napolitano. The man is the man has lost his mind. He's senile. No, I don't we'll think he, I, Judge Janine in he hasn't, he hasn't. He hasn't. He hasn't taken a senile pill. I, I don't think he's senile. That, that I don't I think. I think he is. I think. I think that you're besmirching. Good senile people everywhere with that assertion. <laughs> I think it's a personality disorder. I apologize. Well, I just, you know, I mean, people who are senile become kind of more comatose and sweeter. Anyway, yes, Brian. Well, two things. I, you mentioned that. I wonder if senility is um, much like uh, if, if it's a if it's a, a sort of a, a a revelation of one's inner character. You know, most people, you know, like you said, they become you know more cat. cat so it seems to agree with me, catatonic and sweeter and, you know, nicer. Whereas if you're an asshole and always were an asshole, you're even more of an asshole. You're less inhibited and less less inclined to hide your asshole them from people. Also, real quick, I'm just waiting in 12 or 16 weeks from now or maybe a year from now to turn on the radio when I'm at work and it'll be an AP radio news update. This just in, the White House has been reduced to a pile of ash. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you something about uh, that. I think that about Trump that makes him different than most of the people who become president is that he's never in his life had a calling for public service. In other words, he, what has he ever done here in New York? And John's here from New York, and so's Tony and myself. Uh, what's he ever done that showed a certain social consciousness? They're nothing. And and people, at least who are drawn to being the president, go into politics because at least at some point they have a desire to, you know, to uh, to do something. And in his case, there's nothing there. It's empty. It's all smoke and mirrors, Tom. Well, I'll use the phrase that uh, used uh, about uh, Barack Obama that I disagreed with, uh, but I definitely agree if you use the phrase with, with Trump, and that is, He's a rank amateur. He has no, no relevant skills or experience to do the job. As you said, I mean, it's it's like Will Dursole line about uh, about Jesse Jackson. I didn't know that uh, presidency was an entry level position. It's it's he has, and I've asked the same question. What 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 has he done in the past that gives him any kind of experience? What he's just doing is what he's always done. He's always run his business autocratically. He's come in to the presidency thinking it's the same operation that he had before. He was going to do the same things before. He's going to sign his name to a bunch of things. Right. He wasn't have to worry about a Congress to deal with. He's just just doing what he thinks the president is, and it's a total it, it, it's it's a it's a total misconception. He doesn't understand what a president does or is. Or what is president supposed to do? Well, I'll tell you something. Will Durst has said a, had a couple of tweets the last couple of days that were just phenomenal. One was, if the Democrats take over Congress in 2018, the big question is not will Trump be indicted for crimes, but will he be tried as an adult? <laughs> <laughs> And the other one that I really liked was, he wrote, Trump says he wants to let Obamacare fail. This will make America great again. A leader willing to let other people die to prove his point. <laughs> a couple yeah. of really good tweets. He's been doing some great tweets lately. 
you know. And, uh, Here's a question I have. Yeah. Uh, this, what Tom just said, he's a rank amateur and stuff like that, Tom, which I agree. Maybe there should be a some kind of parameter or something they should, if you want to run for president, then you should, he should have to have one like office or serve somewhere. This, this should be like a, we should look back on this president and say, this can't happen. Look, no. anybody can run for president. I don't agree with I, that. No, wait a minute. I think Trump has proven that. Anybody can run for president. There are no qualifications to be president. The only qualifications should be that the American public feels that the person is suitable to run for office. Um, uh, and, and in this case, the guy won. And he's totally, uh, he has no ability at being president of the United States. He has none of the, uh, he, he doesn't even have the passion to be president of the United States. So uh, we've really got, we've got, America really fucked themselves over this time. Okay. You don't think you should have won something else to like, uh, like another office position? Like, I, no, I, no, I was, no, uh, no, I would, you York. would never want to see that happen. You know, you would never want to see that happen. But getting back to Tom, who, you know, said, I said years ago uh, when he was running for president or when he was first running for president, when he was running for the nomination against Hillary was more accurate to the point. Uh, I said that Barack Obama, unfortunately, was a rank amateur. And he, really, he was. There, he had no real experience. He had been a senator for about a year before he said he was going to run for president of the United States. Yeah, but he had also he had also been uh, in the state legislature in Illinois, so he had experience with with running campaigns. Yes, but he, and, it, and it, at running campaigns, office and dealing with, yeah. with with other other uh, representatives. So he he although he, we okay. we can argue yes he. he, he had less experience yeah. than we would prefer, but he, to say he had virtually no experience at yeah. all, I think is, is, but is he wrong. He really did not have a very deep skill set, okay? And in the case of uh, Hillary, who I at that point was supporting, she had all the goods, okay? Um, it, it, to begin with, I mean, I remember I, I keep mentioning this in Newsweek, he had a picture of Barack Obama walking up the steps to the Capitol this before he became president and said, how can Barack Obama expect to be president of the United States when he hasn't even gotten used to the Washington culture? I mean, he hadn't been in long enough to have any of that skill set. Now, granted, he was a quick learner, and I think mm -hmm. it took him a full term before he got up really up to speed, and I think in his second term, he was a, he was a really solid president. But the one thing he did have from the get-go that Trump doesn't have is a respect for the office. Well, he had also another thing. He had Joe Biden too. Yes. Um, yes. You know, and he and that's another that's another thing about Barack, uh, Obama. He knew who to pick to assist him to because uh, he knew his own limitations and, and what, where he was lacking. He knew who to pick to uh, to help him out in areas where he was lacking. One of them was Ob was Biden. Another was was Hillary Clinton. Another question is, what's happened to Joe Biden? We don't. He, he's not even entering into the discussion these days. He's younger than uh, McCain. You know, he's younger than McCain. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, he, Biden was always no. good for a quote to put somebody in their place. You know, and uh, under this a whole Trump administration, I don't remember. Do has anybody heard from him? He about a month ago, he was on a couple of. Uh, yeah. He was on Colbert's show. He oh, was really? on, but that was like a month or two ago. Yeah, it he wasn't. Said, he recently. said a tweet to uh, McCain, uh, you know, uh, you know, urging him to to, to, to keep fighting because I mean his his son uh, died of the of the same uh, brain cancer. So he's he's mm. he's getting. And oh, currently, course, yeah. Things, yeah. Biden right now is also uh, involved in uh, in getting more research for cancer. So he's got he's 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 working. He's not as much uh, in in the public view, but he's definitely working on that. I'll tell you something about about uh, uh, McCain, and I you know I always liked McCain until he ran for president, and then I felt he really sold himself out. I I, I almost felt bad for him because I thought he had lost his dignity. Um, 
And uh, well, Sarah Palin will do that to you. Well, yes, <laughs> uh, but the fact that he even allowed that to happen, you know, he yeah, didn't even know who she was, and he went along with it because everybody said, "Oh, it'd be good to have a woman up there. It'd be, it'd be that'll be terrific, right?" Well, so. we need somebody younger, like we were talking earlier, uh, like musicians. But we need somebody younger on stage. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, like. Uh, um, uh, Kid Rock. For the youth vote. Kid Rock. <laughs> oh, that's right, yeah. A girl, Kid Rock, for whatever is it, Governor? Uh, what does he want to run for? Senator. Senator, senator of President Oklahoma, I think. Senator, yeah, Senator. But anyway, I mean, the, senator th Rock. the, the thing is that, that um, uh, you know, the, you, you, you do need a certain amount of expertise when you're going to be president. And my feeling is, you know, if, you, if you're going to, you don't hire somebody who's never done any plumbing to fix your pipes. And and the idea of the professional politician, while it seems abhorrent to a lot of people because we'd like to think that anybody's son can grow up to be president, the fact is there is a skill set needed there. And the I best think they should also be an executive like a, a governor or something. Well, it, it, uh, but it, uh, the skill set that it best serves the presidency is if it is a governor. Uh, because he because has. Because they can handle a lot of fires. Well, but you know, because he because a governor has had to handle a, a government as well as a business, and now when you're president, you do the same thing. Senators do not make great presidents, uh, but governors do. And the majority, if you look back at it, the majority of people I think who become presidents were governors. What, what do you think about yeah. mayors? <laughs> mayors? No. Uh, there's some up and coming mayors. Yeah, uh, it depends on what town. If you're the mayor of of Camden, New Jersey, no. If you're the mayor of New York City, you're running a pretty big business there. You know, so I I I, I think it, it depends on what city you're governor from. Uh, I mean, uh, m mayor of. Yes, mm -hmm. Mike. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Governors do make better presidential candidate they know what to do they know how to handle you know situations in their state am i correct well wrong? they know they know how to administer they administer uh, you know they know how to uh, they they know what they you know you have they have to deal with lord over a budget they have to do all the things in microcosm that you have to do as a president you know in, in a larger way so People who were governors, like Bill Clinton, was ready to become president because it was just, it was a bigger job. You were running a bigger corporation. Any now, corporation. Our governor, our governor here in California, old Jerry Hippie Brown, yeah, he did fight with the uh, assembly, both, you know, both houses, to pass the damn budget. He passed it. Uh, I don't know uh, how uh, the hell he did what he did. He's actually threatened. I've told him. Pass the budget. You won't go on vacation. You but, work. Uh, yeah, I know. I you know I know Jerry. Uh, he and I. Uh, that's right. That's, that's, that's why I call him Jerry. I, the hippie, I, 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 used, to, I used to go over to his place in an Oakland for for dinner. Kind of, he had like communal dinners for everybody. Uh, and I liked Jerry a lot. I liked him. Why well, I, I do too. Uh, he has a lot of sense. The the your next governor, who's going to be, is now the uh, uh, lieutenant governor. What's his name? Uh, uh, Are you talking about Newsom? Newsom, I think he'll be the next governor. Gavin Newsom. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hmm. I, 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 or the or the next president. Well, I mean, I think it's going to go. If, they, if they, I'm saying if California succeeds, you've got to remember Gavin Newsom holds a singular historical thing or, yep. or uh, in, in his past that is so distinctive that it's amazing. He's the guy who started America thinking about making gay marriage possible. In other words, he's the guy who first in his city said, I'm going to allow gay marriage to take place in San Francisco. Was he in the movie Milk or no? N no. No. <laughs> that would have been <laughs> for his time. Not as an actor. Uh, yeah. But he, he, he made uh, um, you know, marriage between same sexes possible. I think it got overridden, didn't it, Tom, at, at a certain point? It, it, yeah, what but, happened but, was uh, uh, one thing. It, but to my knowledge. It, to, uh, one thing, you're, you're not really correct. I mean, the marriage thing actually started going in Massachusetts. Did it really? And, 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 2004, court decision. Yeah, and, and what 
what Newsom really did was 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 he was in a very unique position because San Francisco is both a county and a city, and so he was in a position to uh, grant marriage licenses because it was oh, as a, it was a county function, so he took advantage of that. Yeah, uh, and at the same time, I, I sort of hold him sort of responsible for for the uh, uh, passage of Prop Eight because. Because cause what happened was he had this statement. He says that, that you know, gay marriage is going to happen whether you like it or not, you know, telling people. And I said, I, as soon as I heard it, I said, the Prop 8 people are going to run that as, as, a, as, a, as an advertisement. And sure enough, there is just something. Yeah, I, but, I mean, but the I fact nothing, is, the I fact, the fact, the fact is. against Gavin Newsom, but there's something about him that when he talks, he can sound sort of smug. And and that statement, what do you say? It's got to happen whether you like it or not. He sort of kind of sounded very well. You know, but he, but he was right. Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. He, he was right. Well, and if it you didn't... know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're right. I mean, if you know, if you're you're saying something that turns people off, you know, it doesn't matter. Your existence turns people off. So. No, no, but the I thing is, but... California, same way, something, something like that happened. Mm. You know, started way back then. They voted for it. Yeah, it passed. All of a sudden, they stopped. They had to go through the court system of the, you know, the California Supreme Court. You know, yeah. different levels of the Supreme Court of California. And they end up with the Supreme Court and yep, it passed exactly. finally. But the thing is, the thing is that uh, I I think that I do remember the Gavin Newsom thing as opposed to Massachusetts as being the the spark that started gay marriage being brought up all over the country or, or same sex marriage brought up all over the country. Uh, and uh, today now it's the law of the land. I mean, it, it, virtually uh, everywhere is. Didn't you, Vermont, the state of Vermont, legalize civil unions though in 2001? Well, or, some states may have done it early, but mm -hmm. it, they didn't have the impact that San Francisco doing it had. That became very controversial at yes. the time. And when I say it was the spark. You can have this person doing it in Maine and somebody doing it in Vermont or whatever, and it doesn't really grab people. But you say San Francisco just did it, and now it's a big, yeah, you know, and it became a big, uh, you know, like everybody. a big wave just kept on rolling. Yeah, and and that and, and now we we it's pretty much uh, you know, and so Gavin Newsom was right. It's going to happen whether you like it or not, you know. <laughs> and uh, a lot of people don't like it, you know. Fuck them. It's tough shit. Tough shit, exactly. Uh, you know, it's it's just funny. We were talking about this. If California, you know, said, "Hey, fuck you, the United States to Trump," and some of the other states said the same thing to Trump, I think Trump would be more in trouble. You know, what the hell are we gonna do now? We get all our produce from California, and some of the other stuff from, mm -hmm. you know, from the from the other states. Right. What the hell are you gonna do? Trump, yeah. you know, these states like California, Texas, and a few others, yeah. so let them to go, go screw himself. By the way, we've been joined by Jack Bishop, who hasn't turned his camera on. Hey, I've there he is. my yeah. camera on, Kimo Sabi. Yeah, there you go. It's coming. It's there, coming. now everybody there can he is. see you. There he is. Heard you talking uh, about Gavin Newsom. Yeah. Uh, uh, my sister worked for Gavin Newsom for 15 years. Wow. And uh, if nothing else, uh, before he got into politics, he was responsible for uh, creating a uh, entity that uh, took homes in San Francisco, made them available for people who were homeless and low income, uh, and did this as a uh, as a NGO. My sister ran two of the properties, three of the properties that that company held, and my sister was a tough act. She didn't like anybody. She didn't even like me that much, and she <laughs> adored Gavin Newsom. However, however, one thing we don't we we don't remember about Gavin Newsom, and I'm sure Tom remembers it, uh, the the so-called black spot. That let me not. I'm not saying anything racial there, Jack. Uh, oh, the black spot right. on, on Gavin Newsom's I'll, life. I won't darken your door. I won't darken was, your door again for a while. Uh, 
40 years of friendship and you still think you have to walk on eggshells? Was that no. the Gavin Newsom got <laughs> caught with his pants down and he was he was married and he was fucking his mm-hmm. best friend's wife? Was that what the story was, Tom? Yeah, I think it was his campaign manager, wasn't it? What was it? I can't remember. But you're right. He, he was he was fooling around with another friend of his and... Uh, didn't know that. And yeah. his, his wife left him, and he was mayor of the city at the time, and I don't think he stepped down. Nobody asked him to. No. Uh, but uh, but he uh, he was... Uh, that could come back to haunt him if he ran for president, I suppose. Hey, look, if it hasn't haunted Trump... Yeah, really? Yeah, no shit. You, know. <laughs> you yeah. got a point there. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> You know, we're almost like the French. Well, do you now, remember? You do you know? remember? Do you remember the time, Jack, when we were younger and you couldn't run for president if you didn't have your original wife? Oh hell yes! I mean, and that—that's the way it was up until up, up until Reagan. And those wives right. stuck with those husbands forever because mm-hmm. uh, the, of the political ramifications of it all. They just, you know, yeah. they didn't. It, you know, so uh, and you're right. Reagan was the first one that had been married before that ran mm-hmm. for president and won. And now Martin, you got a guy that's been married three times, and you know, yeah. My yeah, favorite story of like all Nelson of- Rockefeller could, that Nelson Rockefeller yes. had that problem. Right. My favorite story of wives sticking has to be uh, Jacqueline Kennedy when she married John Kennedy. She got a a deal from the old man Joe Kennedy that if Jack ever gave her a uh, social disease, he'd have to pay off to her a million dollars. I didn't know. Boy, I've, I've never seen such an incentive to get the clap in no, my life. Either, I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? You didn't see a sentence of what? I've never well, seen such an him. incentive to get the clap in my life. You know. Well, she was wealthy, too. I mean, you know, the Bouvier family were not exactly broke. Now, no. they didn't have the kind of money the Kennedys had. Right. But, didn't uh, the uh, uh, Jacqueline Kennedy's family was part of uh, Rolex watches or something? I don't know something about to do that. With the, uh, something. I heard that. Do you, Alex? I never heard of that. But no, I, well, I thought something, something. No. Jewelry or something. I don't know what it was. Well, maybe think of both the watches. Boulevard. Yeah, thank you. Bouvier Bouvier watches. watches. Yeah. Now, do you know the Kennedy family was part of the Meyer Lansky family Mm. because (laughs) of prohibition? Well, uh, you know there is there is um, where did I read it that the notion that uh, Kennedy, Daddy Kennedy, was a bootlegger is maybe wrong. Uh, and I can't I can't remember why they say that, but that they say he made his money off of prohibition, but he may have made it legally off of prohibition. But I can't remember the reasoning behind it. Well, I think what it is with Joe Kennedy, I think it was he might have run the trucking part in the industry of running the stuff. Yeah, from the boats out, you know, to the whatever places we have to go deliver. It. Well, mo- most of the booze, most of the booze during Prohibition was coming in from other countries. You know, they, they, the notion that they were making, uh, you know, distilling it here uh, was uh, is kind of a misnomer. It was coming main place it was coming in from Canada. A lot of it was coming in from Canada. Mm-hmm. Well, they that, did they make did they make the beer? Uh, that beer uh, somewhere up in. Chicago somewhere? Actually, they had, a, the beer? they had a thing. Sand Brewery. Sand believe Sand believe right it or not, Chicago, for yeah. beer, you could buy, uh, uh, you could buy, I don't know, a, a condensed beer or whatever it was. I don't know uh, what it was. Near, there was a condensed no, wine. No, no, it wasn't was near beer. This was, a, was, this like was an actual con- like concoction that wasn't legal by itself. The minute you added water to it, it was beer. They did yeah. that with wine. I just saw something on one of those, you know, the, you know, uh, how it how it works or something like that, or a history thing where back in 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 California there was a winery who, when prohibition hit, what they did is they took they concentrated the grapes into 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 a packet like a little gelatinous packet, and it yeah. said on there, "Do not put so much, you know, do not." 
do not put yeast into this. Do not, you know, you know, cause you will make wine with this. You know, like they were saying, well, you can't do that. Of course, everybody bought it. And it's in the, on, on the label, it said what, you know, what well, you have well, to do to well, make the wine, wine the wine company but in, in, in couched in language that, Oh, you should not do this. This the, is not the, designed. The, for the wine companies in California, the wine companies in California, the wine companies in California, however, survived quite well because one of the exceptions in prohibition was using wine for sacramental purposes. Mm. So you Thank had you. wines right. like Christian Brothers and a whole bunch of <laughs> Manischewitz. Yeah. <laughs> Oi. Yeah. Uh, and, Mano, Manischewitz. And, and these guys were still making wine and selling it. You know, so. Spodioti. <laughs> now, one of the guys that really did well uh, during prohibition and did even better after prohibition was the the guy that pushed prohibition that ran prohibition in this country after the Volstead Act was taken down yeah he was the one that whispered in congressman's ear you know we got to do something about this marijuana oh no 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 you're thinking of Harry J Anslinger and you're wrong about him he oh, had nothing, oh, really? he had nothing really to do with prohibition uh, he he was a functionary in the government, and he was looking for some way to make his mark, and so he found this thing called marijuana, and he decided that he would start a campaign to make it look like it was dangerous, and so we saw things like uh, reefer madness, for instance, mm -hmm. and if if you look around that time that marijuana marijuana never became illegal federally. Uh, it, they've passed the Marijuana Stamp Tax Act, I think, of 1934 or 35, something like that. What it was mm -hmm. is you could have marijuana as long as you had a tax stamp. But the tax stamp was so prohibitively expensive, nobody would buy it. It was like $10,000 for a tax stamp so you could have an ounce of marijuana. And so what they, if, if they caught you with pot, what they arrested they you on tax, was a tax yeah. charge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you and, know what happened today? Another country, and I in South America, and I can't remember which one, today legalized the sale and consumption of marijuana. Really? Okay. Hmm. Uh, I I want to say, oh gee, I I uh, I, I, I want to say Argentina, but I don't think that's right. But today they said. Roll them and smoke them. I, you I'm trying to remember what country it is, but I think it's some country that said it was just becoming too expensive for them to fight it, you mm -hmm. know, and and they didn't see it as being that much of a bane to their existence that they shouldn't just legalize it and save all that money they were spending on trying to uh, prohibit it. So, and the secret to getting marijuana legalized in this country is not the youth vote. It's old farts like me, Alex. If we can whisper into the ears of the U.S. Congress, mm -hmm. some good weed will give you a blue steel hard on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll Just, be legalized in the morning. Actually, variation of what Jack is saying. Actually, it's through the medicinal uh, or use uh, that uh, that's actually getting legalized. Uh, many, many older people are finding uh, it's uh, really helpful, a lot of their symptoms. Like yeah, but, so. you know, I don't believe in medicinal marijuana because uh, I don't want to have to be sick to be able to smoke pot, you know? Well, so, but what, I say, what I'm saying is it's introducing, because that once it, once it's becoming accepted for that use, then they'll say, well, what's the big deal? We'll just, just legalize it, what, you what, know? What, what has Scott got in his mouth that looked like he had a joint? Let's hope Scott needs something well, like a that. Toothpick. He's been oh, it's a tight. toothpick. Wait. Scott got hungry. Scott got <laughs> <laughs> had to go get that's, some olives to eat. Oh, that's oh. from smoking the marijuana. Hey, Alex, do you remember the night we went to one of the donut shops in Houston and practically destroyed the place? No. Oh, I'll I'll remind you of it sometime. Oh, really? Why were yeah. we were we high? Oh, we were higher than. See, Cooter the first Brown. time I ever smoked pot was in Houston. <laughs> that was the first time I ever smoked pot. And a quick story, uh, my wife's uh, hairdresser sold it, right? So we bought some, and uh, I was driving home after smoking some for the first time, and finally had to stop the car and have her drive it. 
But I always worried that if you, you know, you always heard that if you if you took a uh, smoke marijuana, next thing you know, you'd be doing heroin. And within a week, this guy had sold me the the pot, tried to sell me heroin. So <laughs> I, I went, oh, the, the, the lie is true. The lie is true. Hey, listen, there's our theme. You got to run, don't you? Yep. Got to go do this thing called the intersection okay. in a minute. Catch you in a bit. Well, let me, okay, let me see if I can get this off the air fast enough that you get caught with your pants down. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> you and the horse you rode in. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mike, Ooh. you have one last word. Quick. What? You got your finger. Jack, I have something for you for your show. You can blow your mind. I'll talk to you later about that. All right, buddy. Lucky you. Now you get possession of Mike. Oh, quit being a pain in the ass. <laughs> okay. Hey, be grateful. You didn't have... Uh, uh, he who sure. shall not be named yeah, tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. by, by the way, everybody, uh, uh, do me a favor and wave goodbye, will you? Okay. Bye. Bye, bye, everybody. Okay, that's our uh, citizens panel for tonight. Man, that was good. good. We were all over the place and did a lot of a uh, lot of nice talking about stuff. Let me turn off uh, Skype here for a second. Do a few little things. Yeah. What what happened to the music? Oh, I I put my I put my elbow on my on my keyboard. Okay, that's it now. Gee, one night it was a cat. This time, it was me. Anyway, hey, uh, Jack is next with Amy, and they've got a thing called the intersection. Right after that, uh, is connections at one o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same station. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay. 